Today, I want to talk about how Wayland HDR support is taking over Linux and why that matters for modern displays. For those of you unaware, HDR or high dynamic range refers to a display technology that greatly improves image quality. And it does so by expanding the contrast ratio, think brighter whites and deeper blacks. It also enhances the color depth so you get more vivid, lifelike colors with a wider color gamut. It also helps preserve detail, especially in both shadow and highlight areas, which are crucial for realistic visualizations in things like gaming, media, and design. With more and more modern displays coming with HDR natively, and especially in high resolution screens, where if you don't have HDR, the screens themselves can appear dull or washed out when comparing them to regular screens. That's why HDR in Wayland is extremely important. And we have seen massive development in this field, especially across some of the largest desktop environments. And that's what I wanna to highlight today because this is a five year endeavor for those of you that don't know, the goal of the Wayland Color Management and High Dynamic Range HDR Support Protocol extension are the following, but this has been in the works for five years and recently introduced to us and merged in around the middle of February and has really expanded the reach of HDR in Linux over the last couple of months. For those of you who don't understand what Wayland is, it's a modern display server protocol designed to replace the aging X11 system. It's mainly used in Linux and it governs how applications can draw content on your screen. Some highlights of Wayland are better security, so applications can't just snoop on input and output like they can on X11, improved performance with less overhead because there's more direct communication between apps and the GPU, and modern features including high DPI support and the HDR support with variable refresh rates. Wayland is really a foundation for next generation Linux desktop environments like KDE and GNOME, which we're gonna be getting into. But here's the goal of the protocol that was released. One, reliability to maintain the display server color setup. Two, to support the professional color managed applications. Three, support display TV broadcasts and other high quality video content. Four, support a wide variety of monitors and application content, including wide, gamut, and or HDR. Five, bring basic color management to applications that are not color aware at all. And six, bring adequate color management to Wayland applications that are color aware, but not color managed. And that's exactly what they did. Ever since the release in February, there's been a swath of updates to HDR, including on desktop environments. Desktop environments like Plasma KDE, on Wayland and GNOME on Wayland have now started adding in at least partial, if not full HDR support. For example, on the latest KDE mega release of six, and right now we're on 6.2, we've officially seen a great leap forward into the future of monitors by what it says here, Plasma on Wayland now has partial support for HDR high dynamic range support on supported monitors and software, this will provide you with a richer and deeper color for your games, videos, and visual creations. This is a fantastic thing to hear from the KDE team as early adoptions are going to affect major Linux distributions, including things like Ubuntu and Fedora that use these desktop environments. And I have information about them coming up as well. This has to go up the chain and up the chain it is going because we not only have seen the protocol get merged into certain pieces of software, which we'll be getting into, but it also has been getting merged into the desktop environments, which in turn, the desktop environments, once they get updated on their respective distros, then give you full support for HDR. That means if you have an HDR supported display, guess what? You can start playing games in HDR or just viewing content in HDR by simply flipping on a toggle switch which is fantastic. How exciting as there hasn't been quite a development like this in many, many years. And it's got people super excited, including myself. As HDR monitors become cheaper, more and more people are going to be able to not only afford the HDR support on their monitors, but use it directly in Linux, giving Linux on par capability with HDR support like you would see on Windows, for example. Gone are the days where you would pick Windows for better monitor support over Linux. And another big announcement by another desktop environment, which is GNOME here, they have officially also announced in GNOME 48, a huge milestone as they call for HDR high dynamic range support as well. GNOME 48 is an important milestone for HDR support in GNOME. 
with the initial introduction of the system level HDR support. This means that if you have an HDR display, it is now possible to have HDR output shown from apps which support it. Currently, the number of apps which support HDR is limited. However, work to extend HDR support is ongoing and the availability of this feature is expected to increase in the future. To enable HDR on supported hardware, turn it on using the new high dynamic range switch in the display settings. Since display brightness often cannot be controlled when HDR is turned on, the setting also includes software emulated brightness control. Another wonderful announcement. And these two desktop environment announcements for supporting HDR displays through Wayland have now trickled into distributions. We're gonna talk about that, but make sure to smash that like button for me and then subscribing below. You wouldn't wanna miss another video like this. YouTube can get finicky. So now we get into some of the notable applications that have been updated since the Wayland HDR protocol dropped. Things like games and game launchers, including Steam games via Gamescope with updated HDR protocol will give you access to games like Cyberpunk 2077, God of War, Doom Eternal, Jedi The Fallen Order, and many more that can now run with HDR enabled on Linux. Also Proton compatibility for games running through Proton, enabling HDR involves setting specific environmental variables, and again, using the latest version of Gamescope with the Vulkan HDR layer. We're gonna see more and more games function natively under Wayland's HDR protocol, but one specific instance where we saw an update is a release of the MVP media player which allows you to play various forms of media. And the key highlight here is right here. HDR is now natively supported when using direct rendering DRM as well as DMA buff Wayland on Linux. It was one of the first applications to actually incorporate the support of the Wayland Color Management HDR protocol. And the video output driver now enables Vulkan with appropriate flags. Users can play HDR content seamlessly now. Other places we've seen significant developmental progress and release is Mesa's Vulkan WSI. The Mesa graphics stack has updated the Vulkan window system integration to support the new Wayland HDR protocol as well, and NVIDIA drivers. In NVIDIA with the driver version 565 or above includes enhancements for the HDR support under Wayland as well. It's massively exciting to see how many people have taken advantage of this new protocol in Wayland. And it is in fact taking over Linux. Let me know in the comment section if you have an HDR based display. I'd love to hear from you and if you're excited for this new protocol, but I wanna talk about two massive developments. Ubuntu's 25.04, codenamed Plucky Puffin, is here, released in April. It also now has introduced two major things for display. Ubuntu 25.04 introduces GNOME 48. We already talked about GNOME 48 and having HDR support. Well, with triple buffering for smoother performance, now there are HDR settings. You can enable HDR in Ubuntu 25.04 today. I've tried it out and it's working fairly well. Mind you, I had to borrow a display just to do it, but I do plan on upgrading my displays now that Linux has proper HDR support, and it's only gonna get better. So these types of developments mark significant progress in HDR support on Linux. I'm very excited. And another big announcement from Fedora this time. With Fedora 42, they achieved also a significant milestone by delivering a functional HDR support on a Linux desktop. This is specifically if you're using GNOME, again, 48. With this latest Linux distribution release, we can now, as users of the operating system, use HDR compatible monitors and now enable HDR through the system settings for both GNOME and KDE environments. It also marks a milestone where Wayland is just superseding X11 in every single facet at this point because a lot of people were waiting for the HDR support. Now we have them in Wayland sessions and we'll probably never see anything like that in X11 as it's pretty much deprecated at this point. Now, there is a lot of work to do at the application level support side of things. It's still evolving. For example, modern browsers like Firefox require manual configuration to enable HDR support. Of course, gaming through Steam Play still necessitates the use of GameScope Compositor until a native Wayland support is fully implemented. But overall, this is a pivotal step to modernizing the Linux desktop and just shows how Wayland and HDR is finally taking over Linux, mirroring the compatibilities of other operating systems like Windows 
and now even superseding them. As HDR support continues to mature, I anticipate a broader adoption of this in both applications and other desktop environments for a more seamless transition and experience. Very exciting. Let me know what you think about everything in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button if you haven't already. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.